So in this video, I'd like to finish something I started a while ago. I built this English dial clock uh, by John Wilding uh, a while ago, and I didn't really uh, want to finish out the casework, so I got on making other clocks. Uh, so I thought this, I'd finally get it done and uh, potentially hang this up in my office. Uh, but I wanted to uh, show kind of how we set the clock and then what I did for the casework uh, might be a good solution for anyone interested in, in doing this, uh, in making this clock. This is a really great clock, I think, to, uh, to start out. Um, it's somewhat basic, basic escapement, anchor escapement in it. Um, and it goes through all the fundamentals of uh, clock. A really good book by Wilding. Uh, highly recommend it. There's a couple things like the few C that look intimidating, but the way he uh, takes you through it, it's, uh, it's quite simple. I made some modifications to this clock, uh, won't really go through. Uh, the main thing was how uh, I support the pendulum. I uh, just wanted to make that a little more rigid. And you'll see this clock is much bigger uh, than the clock replacing the uh, case I, uh, I got. So what I'm gonna do first is uh, get this clock in beat and also get the uh, time uh, pretty close before I uh, put it up on a wall. So to do this, um, what I've got here is this uh, microset uh, precision timer. And I'll show you how this works and how it really makes this uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, so the first thing that's important is level the surface. Whatever surface you're going to put this clock on, if you want to set a reference, uh, get it level. That's what I've done with this uh, uh, precision level uh, on this uh, uh, block. So looking at what we need to do with the timer is the first thing is to set the sensor up. It's as simple as uh, you can see here clipping it somewhere near the escapement. Um, this picks up the sound uh, of those pallets engaging. And that's just a microphone you see uh, attached to that alligator clip. But what you can see now is I've got a beat area of basically about 100%. And you can hear it. You don't hear that nice tick tock. You can see the way the light's flashing. Um, that's basically the escapement. So this is ba very one sided right now. So. I'll make some adjustments, uh, kind of showing what we need to adjust to get this thing in beat. Uh, but that's step one, uh, and then you can uh, set the time so you can actually make it a clock. So to get this clock in beat, uh, what I simply need to do is, I've already got it pretty close, is there's a fine adjustment on the crutch. You can see I've web built this little different design and just for doing this, so it can be pretty easy access uh, to get this thing tuned. But by simply setting that, you can see here I've got it way off now. And so it's easy to do. You hear that and you kind of know, okay, I got to go which way I got to go to get this thing in. So you can do a trial and error, but what's nice with this device is it really lets you lock in very close. So we'll get this thing set, but you can see uh, the basic process. So once I got the beat, I've got that into around uh, plus or minus 2%. Uh, but now you can see the rate. Uh, so this is measuring 0.477. And what that is, that's seconds uh, for the pendulum. So this pendulum swinging at 0.477 right now, and it needs to be a half inch swing. So the simple adjustment there is the adjustment nut on the pendulum, and we'll dial that in. Uh, we'll get that pretty close. Uh, ultimately, you need to run this on the clock and keep tuning that over time, but this will get you, you know, within a couple minutes a week. Uh, so here's the new case that I made uh, to fit the clock. You can see the clock in there. Um, you can see the way I mount it. I've got two screws, so basically I'll be able to level this box. Uh, and then there's a screw down in the corner. You can see it behind that pendulum there. So this has got three points. Gives it a rigid mount to the wall. Um, and then I'll come in with this clock actually mounted to the dial and slide this thing in place. And I've got two taper pins on the side. Uh, they're gonna hold everything uh, from coming out. But you can see what's being replaced. Um, this is the old case. Uh, it's much smaller, kind of hard to see. And there's the old uh, clock mechanism. This is an old clock out of, uh, I believe it's out of Waterbury, Connecticut. And it was not that great when it was probably brand new. Um, so historically, I don't think we're giving up much. 
um, and we'll put a much better uh, clock in place and it should go and run nicely for a while. So you can see how I've got this thing mounted uh, to the face. It's got four of these uh, posts with taper pins holding everything in place. So that makes the clock and the clock face rigid. You can see, I mean, this thing's all attached as one piece. So we'll put this in place, uh, rest this on the shelf, and then I've got taper pins that go through these blocks that'll keep the face from uh, coming out. Uh, but I think the assembly should go fine. We'll get it in place. So you can see I've got the clock mounted. Um, it came out nice. So the way that it, it slips in there is you can see you put it in the case, and then I've got these taper pins. And then simply by uh, inserting these taper pins into this side, um, there's no way that's gonna come out. So if you think that clock is resting on the shelf uh, for Z, and then uh, X and Y is held between those uh, taper pins and the blocks. So pretty nice way, I think, to be able to put a case on the wall and then uh, slip a clock in, make sure that it's all level and positioned properly uh, once you get it running and beat. Um, so I'm happy with it. We'll have to see if this thing will uh, run for a couple of weeks uh, before I move it uh, and put it in its final place. So it's good to be done. I think it's a nice way to uh, get a clock, old antique clock case and put some new works in it. So a nice project and hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe and we'll be back shortly. I'm going to get back on that uh, other clock I des was designing. Uh, I need to increase the power in it, so that's going to be the next project. Um, these clocks seem endless with projects, but that's what makes them fun. Take care, and we'll see you soon.